Now, when we build scenarios, uh, what we do is we seek to select out of the uh, driving forces of greatest impact an axis of a scenario matrix. And we seek to match that uh, with an axis that we draw out of the factors of greatest uncertainty. And in, in this case, the scenarios I present to you this morning, the horizontal axis is the uncertainty axis. And our greatest uncertainty, as I, I showed you on the previous graphic, is isolation protocols and public compliance. Will they succeed for as long as they are needed, or will they fail when they are needed the most? That's the spectrum of, of possibility. Against that, the factor of greatest influence is the availability of the vaccine when it is needed, or will the vaccine not be available when it is needed the most, and how we plot those against each other, how you, in a sense, leverage impact against uncertainty, creates four quadrants. And each of the quadrants is a potential uh, scenario. It's a potential future strategic environment that our country may now move itself through. There's the same axis, vaccine availability and, and not available isolation succeeding and isolation failing, done somewhat more uh, colorfully in order for me to introduce you to the scenarios. The first scenario occurs in the top right quadrant. And we it occurs, so look how we've used the, the, the... I do apologize to interrupt Dr. Cronier. We, we lost you at a crucial point there when you just started discussing the viral containment scenario. Uh -huh. Thank you, Harma. What I, I said is the top right quadrant uh, gave rise to a scenario that we called viral containment. And uh, look how we've used the axes to create that scenario. We've said in this scenario, isolation protocols are likely to succeed in blunting the curve. As a result of that, the humanitarian health emergency will be avoided uh, to uh, some extent given that healthcare uh, facilities will, will have time to prepare and a relatively low flow of uh, critically ill patients to take care of. They'll save many lives and the worst of the, of the mortality figures will not materialize. Implicit for us in isolation protocol succeeding is that a significant degree of economic activity will again be allowed to continue within the protocols of isolation. And further, that those sectors or, or, or businesses or individuals who lose jobs and incomes will be able to be carried by stimulus and rescue package efforts to a, a sufficient extent. Should that not be the case, should there be mass impoverishment or should the supply chains be completely broken down, then we don't think isolation can succeed. So we argue that isolation succeeds, it blunts the curve, economic activity continues, rescue packages are effective, and that is the environment South Africa will remain in for the period of around 18 to 24 months until a vaccine becomes available. So 18 to 24 months is the time frame we put on viral containment. We will avoid the worst of the economic and healthcare risks that we face now, and we will emerge in 18 to 24 months' time to pick up the pieces and to begin to rebuild. The second scenario suggested by the axes we've written off. It's internally contradictory. It doesn't work. It suggests that isolation will succeed while a vaccine will never become available. We believe the vaccine will be available, and we don't think isolation could succeed into perpetuity. So we write this one off. It no longer exists in our analysis. We have three to work with. The worst case uh, for South Africa, you can extrapolate this to the world, is the scenario we've named viral obliteration. And this time we've used the axes as, as follows. We firstly said that isolation protocols will fail. So if we describe the narrative of events here for you in, in South Africa's case, uh, those protocols, uh, you might argue, are already failing, uh, given the, the pensioners standing in the queues to collect their pensions and then uh, standing in queues at supermarkets, the restrictions lifted on the taxi industry, the, the sheer impossibility that will later be established 
of isolating people in densely packed informal communities. As isolation protocols begin to fail and, and uh, e economic uh, setbacks uh, will we'll see them fail progressively across society in short order, the, the infection uh, will not be able to be staunched in any, to any extent. And the worst case becomes that we see that exponential infection curve. 80% of people are infected in a matter of weeks. The worst of the mortality and morbidity estimates emerge. Healthcare sector is totally overwhelmed. Uh, we face the humanitarian healthcare catastrophe. These terrible scenes of Northern Italy ar around Milan will become our scenes. And when we need it the most in this window, the vaccine, of course, is not available because it's still many months, perhaps more than a year away. Um, the time frame on viral obliteration is three to four months, because that's how long it would take, we think, for the virus exponentially to, sh to sweep through the society. And it ends in three to four months because herd immunity has developed in South Africa and we will uh, proceed to pick up the pieces. But the price for that in this scenario will be uh, the deaths of, of, of a great many people and, and deaths that might otherwise have been avoided. The third scenario is what we call viral firefighting. And this time we use the axes as follows. We said that isolation protocols in South Africa will progressively begin to fail, not the complete collapse that we uh, speak of in the viral obliteration scenario in bottom left. They'll progressively fail. They'll fail more in some jurisdictions. Uh, they, they will fail. And as they fail, uh, Doctor, what the country will be I do apologize to interrupt, but the, I think the specifics of how these uh, isolation protocols might fail, we must analysts might be very interested in those specifically. Uh, it's a, it's a, a critical point. Uh, Harman, thank you again for your interruption. The, um, the, the manner in which isolation protocols fail in viral firefighting, it's, it's not the blanket national failure. Uh, that we warn of in the in the uh, uh, bottom left viral obliteration scenario, it's more a sectoral or regional. It's it's the failures are limited to difficult sites, sectors, and uh, what will happen here is that after our first national effort to blunt the curve via this initial shutdown. Uh, the South African government will face a series of peaks and troughs of infection uh, sweeping across the society in multiple waves. Each, each, the emergence of each peak requiring a specific new, at sometimes quite draconian series of lockdown provisions in specific areas and regions of the country. And hence we call it a firefighting approach. The, the, the economic consequences to those specific regions requiring further firefighting emergency measures in order to mitigate as far as possible the economic consequences. And we will move through this crisis for a number of months. And then just at the point that we think it couldn't possibly uh, continue, that uh, the society uh, threatens uh, risks being overwhelmed, and that being overwhelmed, we will fall into the scenario of viral obliteration. Uh, South Africa, the world, if you extrapolate to global, so is, is saved. And it's saved by one of a series of factors. The first is the early availability of a vaccine. That means that we've held the line as best as we could. And at the point where we might have been defeated by this virus, the early vaccine saves us or any other country which would be in a similar position. But in this scenario, you can substitute vaccine for mutation or a seasonal effect. And South Africa will be moving back into its spring and summer in about six months' time. So you can put a time on viral firefighting of as, as short an era of about uh, six months when the seasonal effect will back, be back in our favor and may be useful in helping us emerge from the scenario. 